Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Jason Aldean's controversial music video has now been edited to remove TV footage of protests in Atlanta. Try That in a Small Town has been criticized as a video promoting vigilantism and lynching in America. CMT removed the music video but never explained why. The new video on YouTube is a few seconds shorter. The original video showed footage from a Fox News station with a headline reading, State of Emergency Declared in Georgia, as Aldean Sings About Guns. The same footage was also used at the beginning of the original video just after a Molotov cocktail is lit. For the video, Aldean shot the performance of the song in front of the Maury County Courthouse in Tennessee, which has been the site of several incidents of racial violence, including the lynching of a black man named Henry Choate. Kiki Palmer is reminding people that she is queer. Palmer says she spent years hiding her sexuality from others and she wants nothing more than to be herself. Kiki joined Raven Simonier and Miranda Madé on their podcast. She says she didn't want her family to know that she was queer, but at 17, she realized she could no longer hide it. As for words of wisdom, Palmer says that acceptance of that part of herself was part of the process of allowing love in her life. Earlier this year, she was honored with the LA LGBT Center's Vanguard Award. The music world and beyond are mourning the loss of Irish singer and activist Sinead O'Connor. The Met Police say O'Connor was found unresponsive in a home in southeast London. They did not say how she died, but they say her death was not considered suspicious. Known for her soaring vocals and her shaved head, O'Connor released her debut album, The Lion and the Cobra, in 1987. But it was her sophomore album that made her an international star. Her cover of the Prince song, Nothing Compares to You, was a number one hit in 1990. O'Connor was open about her struggles with addiction and mental health, saying she'd been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Her teenage son Shane died by suicide last year. Her final tweet from July 17th read, For all mothers of suicided children, with a link to a Tibetan compassion mantra. Writer, podcaster, and cultural critic Sarah Benincasa says O'Connor had a profound impact on several communities. I want to begin by asking you, what are your earliest memories of Sinead O'Connor in your life or in the zeitgeist? My earliest memories of Sinead O'Connor are of a woman with a shaved head singing directly into a camera in her video for the iconic video for uh, Nothing Compares to You and being so taken aback at the time as a child because her performance of femininity was very Mm. different to what I was accustomed to seeing. I had never seen a woman before who shaved her head on purpose because she wanted to look like that. And as a Catholic kid, as a kid who was raised in an Irish, Italian, Catholic, American family, one of my biggest memories would be Sinead O'Connor ripping up the photograph of the Pope on Saturday Night Live. That was Mm -hmm. a huge, huge, huge deal at the time. You wrote a piece called uh, Sinead O'Connor Did Not Go Quietly. And wonder if you would share with me why you were compelled to sit down and write about that. Well, I write a newsletter called Serotonin, which is a very silly pun. Um, but I tend to write about popular culture and sometimes about mental health as well. I wrote a piece about Sinead O'Connor because I was reflecting on how important she was to my evolution and to the evolution of a lot of young Catholics I knew. We may not have understood when we were young why she ripped up a photograph of the Pope, but as we grew older and a lot of us came to understand the suffering that not just we individually perhaps, but collectively had endured as a result of, of, you know, the epidemic of abuse within the church. I think that Sinead O'Connor became a, a hero to many of us for having the courage to stand up like that and, and do what she did at a time when Saturday Night Live at that time was monoculture in a sense, you know, that we didn't have a uh, so many options for television the way we do now. So that was huge that that happened uh, in a, and 
I wanted to write about not just that, but about how brave she was throughout her life, mm -hmm. standing up for what she felt was right. Right. Thank you, Sarah. And I want to go a little bit deeper into this uh, incident on Saturday Night Live. And of course, she was performing and ripped up a picture of the Pope uh, in protest of the sexual abuse of children by Catholic priests. And after this happened, she was not only banned from SNL for life, uh, she was vilified. And I believe it absolutely changed the trajectory, not just of her career, but of her life. And she was vilified for being a truth teller. Um, would you go a little deeper into that, considering what we now know about the rampant sexual abuse of children by priests? Sinead O'Connor was one young woman from a country that had absolutely been wrecked in various ways by the legacy of colonialism perpetrated by the Roman Catholic Church. She was bold. She was talented. She was conventionally beautiful. She was seen as conventionally beautiful. And she deliberately used the power she had and the platform she had to speak truth to horror, yeah. which is the fact that the mm -hmm. Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church is the world's longest running, most successful for-profit multinational corporation. And a lot of their success mm -hmm. is built on all forms of abuse from mm -hmm. colonialism to uh, the, you know, to fomenting de uh, a war to abuse of folks of all ages and most particularly children. And so Sinead O'Connor knew all of that, was righteously and correctly angry about it and chose to do something that effectively torpedoed her career as an artist in the United States. Yeah. And I think that's really brave. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. I, and you know, she was brave in other ways. You touched on that. She, politically fought for so much her whole life. But one way in which she was brave was in speaking out about her own struggles with mental health and addiction and speaking out about her bipolar disorder. And would you talk a little bit about what that means to a culture when they can see someone who is famous, who's you know had success on one level, but who struggles? I think it's extraordinary that Sinead O'Connor chose to be open about her different diagnoses over the course of her life, yeah. what she went through. She, to my mind, seems to be somebody who understood that as a result of her mental health issues sometimes caused chaos in her own life and in the lives of those who loved her. And she seemed to, when I read interviews with her at certain times, seemed to own that and to uh, want to make amends in some cases. She seemed to be a person, uh, of course, I didn't, I wasn't fortunate to know her personally, but she seemed to be a person who was actively engaged in her own healing. And uh, she seemed to be someone who really supported others in seeking help. And I think that her, uh, her prominence in Ireland and in the UK, where she continued to have a, a recording career that was a bit more successful for a bit longer than here in the United States. I think her prominence there was likely quite uh, important in speaking out about mental health issues there in a culture where people are not often supposed to, as opposed to our culture here of everyone's supposed to be a star. I think that over there, <laughs> right. you've got a bit more of a culture of you know, tallest poppy syndrome. You you mm. don't want to be the one who sticks out because you'll get cut mm. down. And she stuck out repeatedly and deliberately. Barbie fever might be extending all the way through the holiday season. Mattel's CEO says the company has locked in more than 165 partnerships with brands and retailers. The company plans to release more products in time for the holidays, which are quickly approaching. They believe the strong movie fuel demand for Barbie merchandise could give Mattel a much needed sales boost later this year. So far, the Barbie movie has the largest opening weekend of 2023. 
You can watch the Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and thank you for watching.